hello 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 um welcome to my channel life and lessons life and lessons it's your girl melissa back with you with another blessful message <laughs> so um today um today's message um today's message um if you guys watched the first video the preview that i shared with my niece so today's message is on um, courtship. <laughs> courtship. I didn't want to come out and say it, but you know, uh, when my first video, I just want to be, I just, you know, just see a little preview. So um, today's message is on courtship. It's on courtship. It's going to be a very uh, beneficial message. Um, it might be two parts. It just depends on you know how long I go with this message, but um, it's on courtship. Courtship, dating, it's the same thing. So I just want to come on here and share this blessful message with you guys. You know, I just want to bless somebody's soul on today because it might be somebody um, either either you are already in courtship or you're about to enter courtship. So I just want to share this message because um, it was very beneficial, you know, throughout my um, my courtship experience. I'm not, you know, I'm not dating right now, but in the past, you know, when I was uh, dating, um, I was in the Sunday school class that I was in, and it was teach. It's called the New Converse class, and the New Converse class, you know, different topics that they uh, they taught on, you know, it was very beneficial. You know, I still have my book, so this is the book. This is the book that we had. This is the book we had. It's courtship, and then it's just some, on the back. It's like some questions. So these are the questions that I'm gonna read to you guys, and I'm gonna give you like you know my answers. You know, uh, when doing my uh, when I was my coding uh, when I was coding when I was dating, give you some answers, and I just hope that it might help you throughout your uh, your courtship. So, um, the first one is the first question is it say what is date what is dating and um dating is everybody probably probably already knows so i know you know what i already know what dating is but dating is you're getting to know the person that you are coding you're getting to know them you're getting to know each other you know you're going out you're getting to know each other like and dislike what he like and what you like you know, just sharing, you know, different, you know, views and opinion. So that way, you know, once you know how a person is, you know, is you're going to take the next step, go to another, the next step. So, um, that's the first question. What is, um, what is dating? The second question is, how old should one be before they date? And I just want to share, um, Right, I really believe like there is no right now in this day and time. There's like no, you know, it should be an age limit. But right now, this day, this day and age and time, you don't see no, it's not no age limit because you have some. You have like, you know, older people. Some older people I know like in different cultures, like some older people they are you know dating you know young kids. You know, some parents are picking out spouses for you know their child and. Their child not even uh, at a legal age. Some are, are at the age of seven. They're at the age of 12. And I just feel like the age, it should be a legal age where the person they have, like, you know, they have knowledge. They have, you know, knowledge skills, you know, to know what they get into, you know, um, what they bring into the table, you know, as far as like if it's, you know, woman, you know, cooking and cleaning or if it's a man. But when they're at the age that they might be like seven or 12, that's like still kind of like to me like a, a minor that's a minor and you know i just think like it's sad that when i hear about that i feel like like it's rape that's purity rape you know it should be a legal age and from my experience when i was dating um when i was in my 20s the oldest i dated a person when he was in their 30s and when i was in my 30s the oldest i dated a person was in their 50s so i just want to put that out there it should be a legal age it should be a legal age where if you dated somebody, you know, it should be a legal age. So I just want to say that. Number three says, um, what is a proper date? A proper date. Now, um, I'm going to speak on from like two point, you know, both ways. Like if you like me, you're in church, 
If you like me, you church, you in church and you're saved. I always say a proper date is, you know, you doing it to the glory of God. You doing it to the glory of God. Like you're not disrespecting each other uh, space. You're not doing anything that's is unpleasing in God's sight. When I say unpleasing in God's sight is where when you're going on a date and um, you're not trying to touch each other or you're not, you know, just trying to get fresh or physical. So I would say a proper date would be like you're doing something that's pleasing to God. You're going on a date and you're behaving yourself. You're not in his space. You're not in your space. You keep your hands to yourself. So I would say a proper date would be um, doing something that's pleasing to God, where it's just, you just went out on a date, y'all had a conversation, it wasn't nothing physical, it wasn't like, no, uh, you know, nothing where you have to have to do like a physical contact or anything, you just went out, you enjoyed yourself, you had, you had a conversation, you talked, I would say that's a proper date, and don't let nobody try to uh, convince you into, you know, trying to, hey, let's take it a little farther. No, stay at your pace. Stay at your pace because you don't want to come off like seem easy. So I would say stay at your pace. So that would be a proper day to me. Um, number four, what should you look for in a potential mate? What you what you, what should you look for in a potential mate? You want somebody that's um that have good morals. Somebody that have good morals that have something good for uh have something good going for themselves. Somebody you want to feel secure. You want to feel secure, you know, in a relationship when you're talking to somebody, you're dating, you want to make sure that they have a good stable job. Um they make sure they have they have a car, a good working car. So if you go somewhere, you go on a date, you know, you make sure you have a good reliable tra I would say reliable transportation. And I know that there are some people that are out here they're dating and they uh they're significant other, they don't have they don't have a car and they still hey, they going around, you know, on transportation. Okay, that you know, I understand that is fine. That is fine, but as long as they're working on, you know, getting some transportation. Cause I know you probably you don't feel like you know is we gonna be on you know the bus for the rest of our life, you know. So I would say as long as they're working their way towards you know getting reliable transportation, you know. So that's um that's what I say you you want to look for somebody to have good morals, somebody you uh, secure. I would say the main thing make sure you secure. You want to make sure that when you're dating this person that. You want to know that he, you know, he's going to be your backbone. Like if something takes place, that he's going to be there. He's going to be there for you. You know, you can you can count on him. You can depend on him. You don't want to be as be as where you're talking to somebody and hey, they say I know in life things happen, but you want to be at a place where you can feel secure. You know, like he has a good working stable job. So, and another thing, you want to make sure, even like if you far as you go, you meet his family. Sometimes you can always tell about a person um, how they is, is how they treat their mother or their sister. The girl, same thing. You can tell, you could tell how, you know, how she is with her family, how she is with her family or how she is, you know, with her children. So I would say make sure that someone to have good, mor good morals. And the next one is... And again, these are just some notes that I'm just sharing with you from when I was in um, when I was in my old Sunday school class, and we was uh, the lesson was on courtship. So I just want to share with you, the, you guys, um, you know what helped me, what helped me throughout my courtship. And number seven is: Is it okay for a safe person to date a unsafe person? Now I'm gonna be flat out. Honest with you, I'm going to be flat out honest with you, it's a no. It is a no-no. It's a no-no because um, it's a sin. It's a sin, and the scripture tells us, it's a scripture to go with it, and it's in Second, it's second Corinthians 6 and 14, and it says you are not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers because if you're dating somebody and they're not saved, that person is going to care for the things that are of the world, and here you're going to be careful for the things that is of God, that's pleasing to God. So they say, like, if you're watching a movie, you're a couple, you're watching a movie, he might want to watch a movie that have a lot of sex scenes in it, and you might want to watch a movie that's have something to do, you know, um, have something to do with 
uh, religious uh, values. So the two and two, it can't go together. So you have to, you have to be self. It's pleasing to God. So I would say it's a no. It's a no. If you do it, you know it's wrong. It's a sin. I'm just gonna flat out tell you the truth. I'm not gonna tell you. It's okay. You can go talk to somebody that's not saved. It's a no no. Now it's a different story if if you're not saved and you're already dating that person, then that means that the both of you, the both of you need to seek God. The both of you need to get a relationship with God, so God can um bless your you know can um unify that relationship. You know it's a different story if you two you're not you are you're not in the faith already. So I just want to put that out there and say, well, there are already people out here they're dating and they're not saved. You know, that, you know, that was before, it's before time. Like, you was already, you know, in a relationship, you know, already, like, like they say, we come in the world, we're already in sin. But once, you know, you get, um, you get, you, you, you know, you get a relationship with Christ, it's a different story. Things should change. So I just want to put that out there. And... Oh, that's the last one. That's the last question. That's my last question. So, um, another thing I want to share with you guys is, um, and it's really helped me. It really helped me. Um, this name is Troy Roberts, and um, he is Sarah Jake's husband. And he gave, it was five, it said five, five things you should look for. Five things you should look for in a mate. So, um, the five things, I want to just um, read them to you guys. And if you want to, you can write them down. If you want, you can go look up the video. His name is Troy, Troy Roberts. And it's five things you should look for in a mate. So, the first one is chemistry. The first one is chemistry. And chemistry is, it said, feeling something similar. So, both of you... You see, a, you meet a person, and you might feel something, something similar. You might have something in common. That's chemistry. And then the second is a connection. The second is, the second is a connection. Um, something drawing you, something drawing you to that person, or drawing you to that person, or you drawing, you drawn to that person. So the second is connection, a sense of need. A sense of need to that a person. It says it says a sense of need to that person, but have to be qualified. So that's the second one is connection. The third one is wholeness. Wholeness qualify the connection. I don't need you. All I need is God. So that's the third one. The fourth one is confirmation. 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 That is something that um, I ask all the time. You know if. I'm hearing something like if God is, you know, about a, a, a mate, a potential mate, that's something I have to hear confirmation. If I don't get the confirmation from God, then I'm like, okay, that's, you know, that's not the person. But confirmation, a lot of people, they go break, might say where, you know, I heard, I heard a voice, well, somebody told me this is confirmation. Now, for me, from experience um, in the past when I've dated, God gave me confirmation through a dream. I had a dream, and a dream that I had, um, the man, you know, he was in my dream. I saw the glasses, everything. So I thought I saw the dream. I think it was like maybe a month or two months later, um, the brother, he approached me, and um, I'm like, okay, you the man in his dream. <laughs> you the man in his dream. So that was like confirmation. So I said, you want to get confirmation you don't want to go oh somebody told you oh you know the lord told me that's your husband you want a divine confirmation so i just want to share that and then the fifth one is oh it's something else it's a confirmation a word from god you should feel the presence of god so when you get the confirmation from god you should feel the presence of god it should be peace it should be peace with the confirmation Number seven is a sense of purpose. A sense of purpose. Um, got to know who you are. How are you going to give? How are you going to give yourself to someone if you don't know who you are? If you don't have a sense of purpose, then you're not ready for your soulmate. So a sense of purpose. Those that was number five. So those are the five key things that you want to look for in a um, soulmate. 
So again, I just want to say if you want to, you can look him up. His name is Troy Roberts. And um, those notes, they was very um they was very beneficial. It helped me throughout, you know. Um it was helping me now because right now I'm not right now um I'm not in a relationship, you know, right now. I'm just I'm waiting. <laughs> but I just was just sharing with you my experience with my previous uh my previous relationship. And the last thing, um, the last thing I want to share with you guys that I wrote down is, um, um, I just want to say as you're enter as you're entering courtship, take your time, take your time. Don't try to rush through, don't try to rush the relationship. Take your time, get to know that person, that person get to know you, sit down. Take your time. I know sometimes people, they rush because they're ready to get married. Take your time. Take your time getting to know that person. His likes and dislikes. You want to know how he is. You know, um, when he's not having a good day, he needs to know how you is. And sometimes people are like, well, you're going to find that out as you go. But it's best to know while you're dating, you know, throughout your courtship, like while you're dating, you know, the things that you uh, you might, you're going to be dealing with. So I would say, um, you know, just take your time, take your time. And the most important thing I would say is make sure you pray, you pray and let God be the center. Let God be the center of, um, your through actual courtship. Let God be the center. You know, the scripture tell us in all our ways, you know, acknowledge him. So I would say, make sure with as through your courtship, pray. Pray, you know, pray as you're going on your date. Pray as, you know, you're about to meet his family, you're about to meet your family. Pray, make sure that God is the center of, you know, your relationship. Because when God is the center of your relationship, then that's how the, you know, the relationship, it flows. You have a successful relationship. So I just want to put that out there and make sure that you pick God first. Um, you know, meditate, read, spend as much time as you can with God. So, um, then I have a don't list. <laughs> I have a don't list. You don't have to go by this don't list. You don't. It's not meant, you know, I just say that the reason why I created a don't list is because it helped me from my previous relationship. In my previous relationship, you know, I had so many, there was so many, like, there was red flags. And I say, don't ignore the red flags. If you see some red flags, it's where it's like, you guys are, you're dating, and you see that whereas he have this thing like, he might not feel, might not, if you have like kids already, he might not like your kids or whatever. If you see anything that he's not trying to, you know, get, you know, be, get to know your kids, you know, anything, red flags, don't ignore those red flags, don't. When you see those red flags, you say, okay, address it right away. Address it, say, hey, okay, what, what is going on? Why is it that? Every time you're around my kids, you act like you don't want to be around them. You don't address it. You know, don't don't look over the red flags. And another thing is, um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, sometimes people they might might not want to ask questions. The most uh, questions we always ask is when we're dating is, "What's your favorite color? What's your favorite color?" when's your birthday let's go a little further than what's your favorite color let's go a little deeper like okay as far as like try to know something about his medical you know his medical history you know so because sometimes when we're dating people and something happened they get sick or something we need to know their medical history so what if you know the, the relationship go to, you know it go a little further and you can you know get married or you get engaged you need to know because what if you're planning to have kids so ask a little question about his medical history and, um, you know, just ask more questions. You know, don't be afraid to just say, you know, when is your birthday? What's your favorite color? You just ask him, you know, okay, what do you like to, you know, just like, what do you like to go for fun? What do you do for, you know, relaxation or meditation? You know, just ask questions. You know, same thing like with the girl, you know, just ask a question, you know. Don't just ask when is her birthday, what's her favorite color, what's your favorite fragrance. You know, ask like, you know, other personal questions like, you know, you know, uh, tell me a little something about your family history, you know. So, um, I said don't be afraid to ask questions. And then the next one is don't. <laughs> like I said, you don't have to go by 
You don't have to go down this don't list. But I said, don't be so quick to tell everybody when you're talking to somebody, give it a little time to, you know, that it's official that you are dating. Don't be so quick to, you know, tell everybody we're dating and um, or put it on social media because when you move too soon or too quick and then things don't work out, then you, you're them friend, same friends or family member. Oh, what happened? I thought y'all were. So just keep it, you know, say, okay, well, when we going to meet them? Um, when the right time come, I'll introduce you guys. You want to know when, know for sure that, you know, you want to take that next level. And then you, uh, you, you'll you tell them or you'll introduce them or you'll put it on social media. So I would say take your time, man, when you're telling, when you're telling um, your, your loved ones, your friends, depending on social media. Take your time. Don't be so quick to just broadcast it. And let me see. And another thing, the last thing I want to say is, uh, and I think I mentioned this in the beginning when I was going on, uh, telling you guys, you want to make sure that, um, what, when I, the question I asked, what should you look for in a potential mate? You want to make sure, I would say, make sure this is working. <laughs> make sure. Make sure that this is working properly. You know, to when you're uh, talking to somebody, you know, you want to make sure that, this person, they didn't just come out a psych ward. Medicaid, you want to make sure, you know, that um, this his, the, his everything in the mind, everything is working right. You know, so when you're talking to them and they're talking a little off or paranoid, you know, different stuff. You just want to make sure because those things, too, can be uh, hereditary. Like when you're dating them and just say you want to take it to the next level. And you got to think about if you have, want to have kids by them. What if you have kids by them? You know, so you, again, I said, ask a question, you know, about their um, medical, their, you know, their medical history. So make sure that this is working up there. Make sure that they have a stable job, you know. Ask for check stubs. Ask them, let me see your check stubs. You want to know how long they're working on the job because some of them, um, they, they come to you. They come, it happens. They come to you in sheep clothing, but you want to protect yourself. You want to protect your heart from like, um, you know, from a tragedy, you know, from a breakup, a broken heart, you want to protect yourself. And I'm just, the reason why I'm saying these things because I have gone through things. And if what I'm saying on here can help somebody else, you know, um, I just, hey, it, I, I just want to share it to help somebody else. You know, I don't want you to, uh, you know, you're entering a relationship and this person, they don't have a stable job or they may be abusive. I want to say pay, like I said, again, pay attention to the flag, the uh, the red flags. Make sure he have a stable job. Don't be afraid to ask him for his check stub. He said he got a car. Uh, let me see your car. Let me see your license. Let me see your insurance paper. Let me see because from experience, I have learned some guys come to you, they approach you, and they don't have it all together. They don't have a stable job. They don't have um, a car. They don't have a um, stable, stable transportation, and they come to you, and then they get you, and then later when they get you, they don't have these things. And so I just, if anybody I can help, you know, uh, share this bit of this information with you to help you throughout your courtship, hey, I just want to share anything God gives to me, He tell me to share. So I'm, this is why I'm sharing this information. So, um, I think that's all for now. So, I hope you guys, I hope that this message that I just shared with you on courtship, I pray and I hope that it was beneficial to you as it was to me. And um, it's your girl, Melissa. Until next time, I pray and I hope to see you in my next video.